Hello, hello, my lovely angels. This is your girl, Sim, back with another episode of The Sim Squad. Hi! So today is the yay and nay edition for October. I did buy quite a bit of perfumes, but it's because I purchased sets. And thanks to certain companies releasing four perfumes together, <laughs> this one's going to be a massive one. And I'm excited because most of these perfumes I have uh, loved and liked and I wish to share them with you. So because this video is going to go on forever and ever, I'm going to make it quick. Like you know, yay or nay videos are just like brief description and then yes or no. The first one is from this entire collection by Latafa and this was the Hayati. So let's start with the first one which is the Hayati, the original. It comes in this pretty black bottle, it's very minimalistic and beautiful and I quite like this bottle. Now this one is like immediately it gives you the masculine vibe. So many people say that they wear it themselves like women but I personally would not prefer wearing this on myself. I would consider this perfume as a woody aromatic because immediately I can feel the aquatic vibes, I can feel uh, slight fruitiness alongside a lot of aromatics. On Fragrantica this has got 4.25 which is quite a bit. These perfumes being as cheap as they are, it is not a surprise that people love it. I mean for the price, the quality is excellent. Uh, is the longevity that long? No. But when the pricing is so cheap, I don't think you should be worried about the longevity. I mean if you keep spraying it every four hours, it will not cost that much to you. So this is in the same category as uh, your Paco Rabanne's 1 million, uh, the Rasasi Hawas, the men one, which is like the blue or purple uh, bottle. I'll try and place the bottles over here. Um, and it is like a very known fragrance. It is not something unique or something I would be like, oh my goodness, I've not smelled this before. All I can tell you is like it's a very aquatic scent. And you literally feel like you wore perfume and you went in the swimming pool and you came out. And you know that aquatic uh, feel of the chlorinated water alongside your uh, beautiful perfume. It mixes together and you know it like says, smells very very attractive. And I think that's what they try and achieve when they make aquatic perfumes. That very sexy, very attractive scent for men. The top notes for this are apple and bergamot. Middle notes of cinnamon and woodsy notes. And the base notes of vanilla and musk. So it's a fairly... A simple perfume the opening definitely is fruity but it's not like apple how they're saying or bergamot it just smells like fruity notes like i can really not identify just the apple note and even if i do it is not the feminine type of apple which is like the crisp apple juicy apple it's a very like dry apple kind of scent i mean i've never had a dry apple <laughs> i'm assuming it would smell like this because it does smell very dry but at the same time, you have this aquatic notes, which are like making it smell very, very pretty along with those sweet fruity notes. The dry down for this is like very sweet, but at the same time, I feel like there's a suede note that they've forgotten to mention or intentionally did not mention because it does have this very smooth suede scent, but it is not like very prominent scent. It's there in the background and I can, I can feel it when I smell it. But like for some odd reason, the notes, like they have mentioned the cinnamon and woodsy notes, I can smell the woodsy notes but I don't smell the cinnamon at all in this so like maybe these notes are wrong that are given on Fragrantica as for the perfume itself it's a beautiful fragrance I don't see a man not liking it I don't see a woman not liking this on a man so for me this was a definite yay I would probably give this perfume a 7 out of 10 just because it's of the lack of innovation it's not very like wowing me but it's very nice it's nice like a man would smell good if they wore this this is definitely masculine. Uh, this would be more suitable. I mean, actually, you can wear it all day and any season. This is one of those fragrances that can just be worn on daily basis. I see these, this perfume being worn more in a work situation, like a daily situation or like running errands or something. It's a very easy perfume. It's a very like not dressed up perfume. It's a very casual fragrance. The projection is like two feet and the longevity, I would say, It'll stay like for three hours where you'll actually smell it. In the fourth hour, it'll start declining. So I would like spray this like every three to four hours, depending on your how strong you like it. And you will have to go heavy handed even if you respray this. So you have to decide if the value of the perfume is worth spraying it like thrice a day if you're staying out for a long time. The next one on the list is another one for men, which was the Hayati Al Maliki. So it's the same one. They all have like different packaging, the colors of the cap and this one is like very blue and chrome which I really like. And I believe this is the, one of the most popular ones in this range. 
oh yeah this is an amber spicy perfume it's very unique it doesn't smell like a very casual scent this smells a little dressed up this smells like a guy who actually takes care of himself like who does like a lot of uh, grooming and takes care of himself not grooming to an extent where it becomes like a mania like you know christian bale from psycho <laughs> it's not to that extent but it is still like smells like a per person who, who who dresses up well and who knows how to look good on fragrantic it's called 4.71 which is like a lot and they're saying this smells like uh, phantom uh, by um Paco Rabanne. the top notes for this are nutmeg pink pepper ginger and bergamot middle notes of woody notes labdanum incense and cedar and the base notes of musk ambergris and amber this is so good this is so good like for me in the beginning the ginger bergamot everything combined i don't know like in the first sniff i felt like i smelled pineapple but it's not listed over here instead it says nutmeg pink pepper ginger and bergamot so i'm assuming these notes together they're kind of giving that pineapple kind of thing but it's not a strong pineapple it smells like a fruit and in my head it's like because it's sweet bergamot maybe it's like twisting into this uh, or more like warping into <laughs> a pineapple note it's definitely very woody it's slightly animalic you do have the cedar note in it as well which is very prominent but i don't smell the incense in this which is like a good thing because like incense kind of can overpower all the other notes and i would rather like have the scent smell the way it is instead of becoming very incensey so you know you can actually ignore the note of incense in this it's spicy but it's not the aggressive spicy it's a mild spicy in the end it becomes a very beautiful amber musk ambergris scent which is uh, which has a hint of uh, spices and that's about it but it smells unique i like this because it, i feel like i have probably not smelled something like this like on a guy and it intrigues me like if a guy wearing this would pass by i would definitely take notice of the person because like it does smell good the other one for uh in comparison to this the hayati the original if a guy would pass by i would be like yeah that was a good scent but like i would not turn back and look at the person like who is wearing this scent you know this one is very attractive i mean on fragrantica if it's got 4.71 it's a lot right and it does last a little longer than the original as well this again is like they say it's unisex but i don't think so i think this is a masculine scent again you can wear this any time of the day any time of the year, spring, summer, winter, whenever you want, you can wear this. This is definitely a big EA for me, a big EA. The projection for this is like three feet, not more than that, but again, depends on how much you spray. And uh, the longevity, I would say it's like six hours, yeah? But again, like me and even Ali for that matter, we like we do respray a lot. So in our case, Ali would re definitely respray this perfume maybe every four hours. My rating for this is like 8 out of 10. It's a beautiful scent. I do find it unique. Uh, I am planning to get Phantom for Ali because I've heard a lot about it and if it smells anything like this, I'm sold. The next one in this line is the Hayati Gold Elixir. So when I saw this bottle and uh, you know like even the word Hayati, it is like it means my life. Hayati means my life. This one, oh, it's so beautiful. This one is like when I smelled this, I was like whoa like whoa but and you know when i smelled it for the first time i was like ah this is definitely unisex and i can wear it but then it starts drying down and you're like no <laughs> this is like leaning masculine again so it's unisex definitely but it leans uh masculine it's so fruity leather so in the beginning that freshness and everything and it has this little hint of like masculine thing going on which you like and which you're like you appreciate because like as a woman if you wear that you will appear to be more uh, uh forthcoming you'll be a bit more like powerful your entrance will be dramatic etc etc but like as it like dries down the leather comes out quite a bit now frankly speaking i would wear this like i do think it's a masculine scent but like i wouldn't mind wearing this myself on fragrantica unfortunately it's only got 4.12 and it's classified as a fruity leather the classification is fine but on fragrantica i don't know why it's got like 4.12 it definitely deserves more love Please ignore all these things written because I was like planning to do a video with Ali and then he bailed and <laughs> I'm just using the strips, you know. So this is supposed to smell like Armani Cote Perfumo, which is like a different version. It's a flanker of the original. And Ali used to use uh, Armani Cote. I don't know why he stopped using it because I quite like that perfume on him, especially when he would go to work and stuff. Top notes for this are bergamot, grapefruit and cassis. Middle notes of leather, peach and saffron and the base notes of vanilla, amber, musk and vetiver. When you actually read these notes, you feel the perfume transitioning exactly from the top, middle and base. And this is a very volatile scent. It's, it, it changes. It's not uh, 
not volatile, dynamic, let's just call it. It's not like a uh, linear scent. And it does change over time, which is why my opinion, whether it's like to be worn by a woman or not, it kind of changes just because of that. But honestly speaking, I would wear this. I would wear this, especially when I'm going for events, anywhere I need to impress, you know, but I would have to dress nicely. I would have to dress to impress and then wear this perfume and level up. It's a very like sexy leatherette kind of perfume. So if you're wearing a leather dress or something, you know, and if you spray this on yourself, you you leave an impression behind. <laughs> this will definitely be a compliment getter. I think from this entire range, this one is my favorite. Like I really like the suede scent, which does not touch on leather. You know, like leather can become a little like you you have to be in the mood to wear something like that. But this one is very easy. This one is a very soft leather, so like it's it's easily wearable. It's not like go it's not going to offend anybody. It's not going to offend you. You're not going to feel start feeling sick or overwhelmed with your scent, you know. This is the way like a leather should be used in my opinion. This again, I would give it like any time of the day, but I guess it would be a little bit better during fall, winter than summer. But if you spray less, I think you can pull it off in summer as well. Now, this one is an intimate scent. So like if people come like uh, it'll project like around one and a half feet, like people have to come close to you to smell this on you. But the longevity but the longevity on this is like insane. This is definitely six plus hours. My rating for this is eight out of 10. And Ali loves it. He wears it a lot. And whenever he wears it, I always ask him, what perfume are you wearing? And he tells me. And by the way, this one smells different on each and every person. So this is a definite yay for me. It was a successful buy. And from this entire range, this will probably be my most favorite perfume. The next one from the series, and it's a very recent release. It's the Hayati Florence. Now I know this range has another bottle, it's like a brown bottle. I've been seeing it around but I can't find that in Dubai. So maybe when once I start going to the market areas and stuff, I'll probably find it because usually you do tend to find like these kind of perfumes in the markets, the old souk, the old marketplaces in Dubai. Now this one was an instant no for me, <laughs> for obvious reasons. I mean like that's what I was fearing that because when I saw this I was like oh my gosh it's gonna be like a lychee rhubarb scent with rose and stuff and I was so right. Now, this is like going in the same direction as Delina or Delina exclusive. Some people are telling me, no, this smells like the very good girl, uh, the red bottle. I haven't tried that. I honestly do not like the uh, good girl series from Carolina Herrera. Uh, it is also compared to Chanel Eau Tendre. Now that one, no, this doesn't smell like that at all. That perfume, I like it a lot, by the way, by Chanel. Uh, I spent a lot of money buying that perfume. I was very disappointed on its longevity and projection, but it's actually a pretty beautiful scent this however it's bearable like i would still like if i don't have a choice i would probably still wear it but like do i like it no i really don't like it it's a very juvenile smell it smells like some a very girly girly person would wear it i mean imagine somebody who wears like a poofy dress and then like a color of a poofy dress is like this it's a lot of tulle a lot of lace and everything you know and then they are like uh, accessorizing over accessorizing like with pink stuff you know like it gives me that vibe the top notes for this are okay so they have not given top middle and base notes they've just given notes it's pink grapefruit so there's no lychee in this sweet notes musk citrus and floral notes now why i feel it's like lychee and rhubarb in this because it has that greenness or it's something bitter green that like irks me and the grapefruit it's a, they're saying it's pink grapefruit and it's it does smell very much like lychee with something green to me now, if you would ask me, does it compare to Yara? It does not. Herba Pura, not. It's going in the direction of Delina, exclusive. Like, it smells like that. And it's a very, very sweet note. And it's kind of like a realistic sweet, uh, sorry, realistic fruity note. So that greenness and everything that's coming through, that like kind of gives you the feeling like it's a fresh smell. Now, maybe, maybe my mind will change. Maybe this is going to macerate. The thing is that I'm going to make my declutter video very soon. And I have a feeling like it's going to go in that. Now I'm really like wondering if I should do a declutter or not because there's so many scents that people are like give them a tr uh, give them a chance like wait and like see I'm liking it a little better than the last time I smelled this so I'm wondering if I should keep this for now but like I don't know I, I, I have a feeling I might still keep it but then I will not reach for it. This is like a super feminine perfume. Uh, the projection is probably like two feet and the longevity is like four hours so it's not like a uh, beast mode perfume or something again this is like a summer a spring summer fragrance where you would want to feel fresh and light and airy or you want to feel girly girly so my rating for this is like six out of ten like i don't know it doesn't impress me and is it a yay or nay 
as of now it's a nay for me so no i would definitely not wear this perfume as of now so for now it's a no nay now there was a second series released by mona this was the udgasm and i have all four in 10 ml and i was hoping that black friday would bring a sale where i could actually afford these full size bottles for this or at least a 50 ml i think they are only in 50 ml but unfortunately the only perfume on sale was uh, sugar patchouli and now i'm disappointed <laughs> Let's start with the first one. Uh this is the Udgasm Cafe Oud. This is the one which has this uh cafe brownie color on it and this is my favorite from the lot. I actually was thinking maybe because I kind of started like feeling not so interested in coffee notes, but when I smelled this it was like love at first sniff. Now when I told people this is like uh reminding me of Elixir by Kiali, they were like no not at all, but it is the same vibe it is exactly the same vibe and i will get a full bottle of this one but i just need to like collect more money right now i do have this 10 ml and i do need to buy a lot of other perfumes from arabian uh, or middle eastern brands and i can't like actually splurge on a full bottle of this this one is compared to atelier cologne cafe tuberosa and tom ford noir de noir now it definitely has that uh, noir de noir vibe it's very dark it's very it smells like a tom ford perfume but like for me this is like floral but it has this cafe note which is not overwhelming at all i mean it doesn't even smell full fledged cafe like if you enter a cafe and how you expect it to smell it doesn't smell like that but does it definitely has like a coffee scent the top notes for this are bergamot mandarin and cappuccino maybe that's why because it's like a soft coffee middle notes of geranium rose and damascena uh base notes of vanilla madagascar white musk patchouli and oud so this one is like again not very oud heavy this entire range is not very oud heavy so if you're scared of oud you can still go for these because these are not at all banyadi none of them are banyadi none of them are overwhelming none of them are smelling like strong oud in any sense they're very mildly present and they give that woody backing for all these perfumes Now this one was a 10 out of 10 for me like instantly 10 out of 10 because it smells like like literally imagine you're surrounded by flowers it's a cafe where you're surrounded by flowers and you're having a cappuccino it smells just like that it also has this coldness about it like i just feel like you're sitting in a place which is very airy and fresh and there's cool breeze around you very very beautiful fragrance this one was like my favorite out of the lot and this is like 100% 10 out of 10 for me this can be worn in any weather like you might think that oh it's because it's oud it should be like worn only in um winter or something not at all it's a very dressy scent so you can't use this in casual situations uh the projection for this is like a good like 3 to 4 feet again depends on how much you spray if you spray more than 3 sprays it's going to project like crazy now the thing is like although this these perfumes are super pricey because the ingredients if you're using a good quality oud remember it will be expensive because oud can range from very cheap to like thousands and thousands of dirhams like just for a little bit can go into millions and stuff so it purely depends on what kind of quality they've used and clearly this is an excellent quality uh, oud which is why it's not smelling cheap or something it just smells like somebody who's very luxurious and uh, uses like very ex expensive creams and lotions on herself and It dresses up super well, accessorizes, you know. So definitely, like my favorite from the lot, and it's a hundred percent yay for me. The next one from this is the Oudgasm Rose Oud, which is it has this rosy pink rose kind of color, and that's how it smells like. It smells like of geranium and pink roses. Oh, also so beautiful. Like again, see, this is another one which I'm like, is that one the other one like the best one or is it the best one? Like I really like this one. Okay, let me like not blah blah and <laughs> speak properly. <laughs> so this one is categorized as a floral, and the, on Fragrantica it's got three point nine four, which is like sad because like compared to the others, like this is in my top right. The top notes for this are pear, lemon, and geranium, which is why it is very fresh. It smells like again like a flower garden, which is roses and geranium, and then you are sipping on something. uh what do you call it a light an effervescent drink you know like a um rosé or something like it's it just gives me that vibe the middle notes are bulgarian rose and peony and the base notes are 
vanilla madagascar cashmere wood and oud and literally this is like starts off super fresh with that pear lemon and all that uh, and the geranium and then moves into florals like very fast so like the top notes literally were there for like a little while and then they disappeared and now you're left with this geranium rosy peony scent along with the base notes of your uh, vanilla musk and the oud and again the oud over here is so mild it smells like wood chips it's not even smelling like it's burning or it's in the oil format this is definitely like a 10 out of 10 for me like i don't know what else to say about this perfume because it's just florals and oud and it sounds very simple but i'm sure like a lot of thought went into this and it definitely deserves better rating on fragrantica this is like definitely spring summer for me uh, you can use it day and night like you can up the game by spraying a stronger oud along with this for the evening wear um the projection is like mild it's like two feet and the longevity is pretty good so it's going to be six plus hours I'm, i don't want to say eight hours because like it depends on your skin chemistry because it's one of those perfumes that will start becoming skin scent and stay for like 24 hours like you would be able to smell yourself but maybe others might not which is why i'm giving it like a six hours and this is a hundred percent yay for me there's no doubt about it it's a beautiful scent and now again see i've gone into that loop where i think like i need a full bottle of this as well now the next from the range is the oudgasm tobacco oud by the way the numbers that are associated with the perfumes are the number of tries they had to create this perfume now this one by the way it gets better with time like initially when i sprayed this this was my least favorite because it went into the category of eternal oud you know those perfumes i tell you it smells like a like olden times like merlin would wear it and then like he's making discoveries and he's going to marketplaces in turkey and he's going through spice markets and you have resins and ouds and like you're discovering new ingredients new perfumes and he found this in like a little bottle somewhere hiding and he was like oh, you know eureka <laughs> beautiful scent but like now i feel it has more character the tobacco in this literally smells like if you unroll a cherry um pipe not pipe what do you call that cigar you know those flavored cigars you get and the cherry one when you pick it up and if you smell the cherry cigar it smells like that damn like i don't know why i didn't think about this before so it's it smells like literally like a cherry tobacco thing even like shisha if you have a cherry shisha it kind of has the same not when it's burning or when you're smoking the actual uh, the thingy the tobacco they put in in the cup smells like that and then it has a oud in the background the oud again and this is like quite strong compared to the other two so this one is definitely very oud heavy very tobacco heavy so this one would definitely be unisex the other one so far like i feel these are all feminine but this one definitely is a unisex honestly speaking i would prefer wearing uh, smelling this on a man than like on a woman but it has evolved a lot so i'm happy like uh, i like this perfume a lot now initially i was mm -mm, I liked it but I was not very impressed and I was like oh I might not get a full bottle of this but now I'm like you know I don't know I don't think I will get a full bottle of this because it does still smell very like ancient kind of oud along with those tobacco leaves and it's slightly masculine so maybe I will not get a full bottle of this I would give this a 9 out of 10 for now so it is still gorgeous did I say the notes no I did not <laughs> the top notes are mandarin clary sage plum white honey and geranium middle notes of clove and saffron and the base notes of tobacco, patchouli, vanilla, benzoin, praline and oud. So it's a very, very complex perfume. It definitely does not smell simple. The plum note, by the way, is very, very strong. I kept saying cherry tobacco, <laughs> the cherry uh, cigar, but it's actually like a plummy cigar. So when I read the notes, it kind of makes more sense now. And this is one of those perfumes that you, the more you smell it, the more you discover the different ingredients. So it's like changing like it, every sniff and I'm smelling different different ingredients in it so this is definitely not a linear fragrance it's a very complex fragrance and it's like a journey so you are literally like feel like you're going through a marketplace and you're smelling different different scents and it's a hundred percent ea for me like i feel like this one would impress people it's a bit more niche but if it impresses you you're going to be stuck with this perfume because you're going to love it so much the last one from this range is the oudgasm vanilla oud and the moment I saw it online, I didn't even have it in my hands and I was like, this is going to be my favorite because I was like, vanilla, ooh. And I knew Kiali is going to do like a brilliant job at it. Like I just knew Mona will not let us down when it comes to a vanilla fragrance. So this definitely is like an extension of Vanilla 28, 
but imagine it with oud with some more complex uh, notes. On Fragrantica, it's got like a 4.61, a lot. And this is definitely a vanillic scent. The top notes are pear, praline and saffron, and that's what you smell. You smell like the freshness of pear, the coldness and sweetness of saffron, and then you have your praline, which is like super sweet, which is like, that's what you get in the initial whiff. But the vanilla is there in the background from the top to the base notes. Middle notes is Bulgarian rose, which is so mild that you can barely notice that there's a rose in this. And the base notes are cashmere wood, vanilla sugar, white musk, oak musk, and oud. Let me just tell you, the highlight is the base notes. And it is a stunning perfume. Like this one is... Now I I think I'm going to skip the <laughs> oud cafe and say this one is my favorite. Okay, see this is what happens. When you smell Kiali perfumes, this is what she does to you, you know. Now this one is like, okay, you know what? Like, let me just spray this on myself for today. It's a very nice fragrance. It's very beautiful. This for me is like... You know, I would wear this because everywhere I go, I literally dress up the way I'm dressed up on camera right now. Like I have, I do wear abaya, I do wear the shela, I do wear like a decent amount of makeup, not as much as I've put right now. But like for me, wearing this even to go out or have uh, run errands or go to the office, I would wear this. This for me would be like the day-to-day -day from the Oudgasm collection and I just love it. This one and probably the rose one as well. Like it's a very no-nonsense perfume it's still very impressive it'll make you feel good you'll smell good <laughs> 10 out of 10 of course the vanilla one i knew it would be like like impressive and it is and the vanilla is like vanilla sugar what she say so like i would love to see how they you know they should make like behind the scenes of creating these perfumes i would be so interested in seeing that this is definitely a unisex leaning feminine but i can see a man wearing this as well it's just fine season i would say anytime during the day actually any season but preferably evening or night time the projection is really good it's like three to four feet it'll travel in the air like how vanilla fragrance are they're warm you feel like it's giving you a hug but at the same time because it has that saffron it has this coldness as well which i personally uh, really like like saffron mixed with rose although this has bulgarian rose but it doesn't smell like your typical saffron rose perfume at all these, all these four perfumes, they have a potential of becoming your signature scent. And it's a definite yay for me. Like, I can't help myself. Like, I keep sniffing. I've sprayed it all over myself. I can smell it in the air. It's so attractive. Like, if anybody would smell this, they would be like, like, you know. <laughs> okay, so we are done with the collection type perfumes. Let's go next with, I have five more. And the first one is the Amber Wave by Martine Martin. Their bottles are ridiculously impressive. I mean, it can't get like better than that. And this one is like, you can call it like a flanker of um, Baccarat Rouge. Oh, like immediately. Now I'm, I'm thinking like after doing the ouds, right? With the whole oudgasm collection, I should have probably done that last because those are, and then plus I sprayed like vanilla on myself. Like I should have probably done those uh, at the end. But you know what? I didn't expect that I would be able to smell this and I can smell this very very strongly. So it definitely feels like a more amber woody version of Baccarat Rouge. So it's definitely like when you smell it you feel like yeah definitely this is like your Baccarat Rouge DNA but then it smells very Middle Eastern because of the amber and the woods. The top notes for this are saffron and orange which was so intriguing for me like saffron and orange like I'm gonna actually try an orange and I'll put saffron on it and see how I feel. Uh, middle notes of jasmine, leather, suede and sugar. Base notes of ambroxan, leather and amber. Now, it does not have ambergris. It doesn't have many notes from uh, Baccarat Rouge. But like the base of it, that burning sugar scent, it's there. Is it medicinal? Not at all. Which is why I love this a lot right now. The saffron in the Baccarat Rouge was quite uh, medicinal. And like, even the dupes, they were like very medicinal. This one on the other hand because of that heavy woodiness for of it and that amber it is uh, giving it like more sweetness and more woodiness so just think of like a more ambery woody sweet baccarat rouge this is like a unisex like a kind of i feel it leans masculine but like honestly speaking i would wear this i am wearing this as a matter of fact so i don't like think this is like masculine or feminine you can wear this daytime evening like it'll convert it'll adapt to your needs <laughs> if you wear it during daytime it'll be just fine 
you want to wear it at night it'll adapt it'll elevate itself and your clothes and everything it'll become like an accessory on whatever you're trying to convey the projection for this is like a good four feet surprisingly and uh, the longevity is like forever but i would say like eight plus hours like but like forever <laughs> it's like if you don't wash it off it's not gonna come off but of course it becomes like much milder respray it after every six hours it'll be enough but when i spray this on my skin especially when my skin is warm after shower and i've recent i've just like lotioned it and everything when i spray this it lasts like the next shower you know which is 24 hours or whatever this is a hundred percent i was gonna say hundred percent out of ten <laughs> ten out of ten beautiful fragrance and I will definitely give this a big yay, big thumbs up. Mateen Martin did it again. Amazing uh, scent. I keep telling you guys I'm going to buy Santorini and I will definitely buy it soon because I'm very intrigued by that one. And the green one, I forgot the name of the green one. But that too, I'll try and get that like as soon as possible. The next one is the very kitsch bottle like all of you all said. <laughs> this is the Aftar Ego Exotic. I mean, just look at the bottle like oh. and it opens up like a lighter. This was Love at First Sniff. Why? Because it reminded me of my all-time favorite perfume. One of my all-time favorite perfumes uh, by John Paul Gaultier. It was called Fragile. I miss it so much because it's discontinued. Actually, I kept buying them even when they were like very rare to find. But surprisingly, in a nook or corner somewhere in some shop, I would ask for it and it would literally be catching dust. So I'm sure like I can still try and find it from somewhere. And wish me luck because I'm going to try my best because that perfume was like intoxicating and I'm so surprised that they actually took it out of the market. This, uh, immediately after I smelled this, I was like, it's giving me Jean Paul Gaultier's Fragile and I was like sold. Although when I bought this, I literally bought this on a whim. I saw this bottle, I was like, ah, new one from Armaf. I was like, let's buy it, let's see. And because the bottle was so such a weirdo, <laughs> I was like, let's go for it. I'm very happy I bought this. This is a pure floral. So if you do not like florals, this is not your baby. On Fragrantica, it's got 4.2, like 4.17, 4.2, something like that. The top notes for this are orange blossom and peach, middle notes of jasmine, sandbag, tuberose and rose, and the base notes of sandalwood, musk, praline and iris. This is a very white floral. So like the rose and everything, I don't know if they've used a white rose because I've not mentioned which rose. Uh, and it smells like, apparently it smells like Creed Windflowers. I haven't smelled that, so I do not know how it smells like. But like, I want to see if Creed's perfume smells closer to Fragile because this one is stunning. By the way, it's longevity, it's uh, uh, projection and everything is excellent. It's a very high quality perfume. I can tell you that like from the get go, I don't, sme I don't feel anything synthetic. It's like a proper perfume. The florals are also like you can't identify if it's tuberose or jasmine or you know like you know all those white florals like I don't know it's like just feels like an amalgamation of white florals and then you've created a new white flower in, in heaven or something you know and it smells like this. It is literally my newfound love and I don't care if it's summer, winter, evening, night, middle of the night, <laughs> matinee, <laughs> whatever I'm gonna like actually like wear this whenever and wherever I can. It's a gorgeous perfume. I know I'm going to be finishing this like really, really soon and ignore the very kitsch, obnoxious bottle. It, the perfume is a stunner and Armaf like have been releasing excellent perfumes off late and I can't wait to try more of their perfumes. This is 100% feminine perfume. Uh, the projection would be like three feet. Longevity is eight plus hours. There's no like you will smell yourself the whole day. This is 100% yay for me. There's no doubt about it. Like the first time I sniffed it and I was like sold on it. So this is a definite yay for me. Okay, so this is the second last one. This was like, it just showed up suddenly. Like, boop, it just showed up on the Latafa website and I had to buy it. This is Bayan by Latafa. This is not from their Pride collection. I find it very difficult because it's an absolutely beautiful bottle. It's super heavy and it smells traditional it smells very beautiful it, this is a fruity floral gourmet very middle eastern like middle eastern vibe check is like 95 percent you know it smells like you know when you enter like weddings and stuff sometimes they spray this rose water in the air with that thingy i don't know what you call that thing but like they do that and it sprinkles everywhere and you know the entire area it smells of this like cold rose water aroma it, like initial whiff is like exactly that scent. It's got 5 out of 5 on Fragrantica, but I think the last time I checked only one vote existed. So <laughs> Top notes are Cassis, Lychee and Pink Pepper. 
which is why I think like that freshness is coming through because it has that lychee. Pink pepper is super mild, so it's not itchy in the nose. Middle notes of praline, rose and cardamom, like freshness again of cardamom. The rose is literally like rose water. The praline over here again is uh, just like the sweetness. It's not that thick uh, candy-like or something praline. It's like a very like just the sweet part of the praline. And the base notes of musk, vanilla and oud are definitely like very prominent. Like as it dries down, that's the only thing that you can smell along with like hints of that cold lychee and rose. It is a stunning perfume. Like this one, like it's going to get much more wear now that's uh, uh, fall over here in Dubai. And also like throughout winter, you can wear this perfume. As a matter of fact, I think it's light enough to even wear during daytime. But it'll come off like very exotic because it definitely smells very Middle Eastern. So it's a, if you're okay with wearing something which smells exotic, like go for it. It's a beautiful scent. Like I would reserve this on occasion wears, but I don't know, I have a feeling like it smells so nice and pretty that I would want to wear it. Like just see how people react around me and see if it's like a compliment getter or is it like something that will overwhelm people. It's very mild, so it looks very like brazen and very like, uh, look at me, you know, like, but the perfume itself is not that bold. The projection is like four feet, which is a lot, you know. Longevity is around seven hours, six to seven hours, let's just say. My rating for this, initially I'd given it 7.5, but I think after maceration, it's just getting better and better. Right now, it is like 8 out of 10 for me, which is like still pretty good. And like for an Arabian perfume, like a traditional perfume, like it takes a lot for a traditional perfume to impress me. So this is like 100% yay for me. I quite like it actually. And I think people should like use this perfume because it's, it's very different. Like if you want to smell exotic, like go for something like this. It's a cold floral like a very cold floral slightly oody perfume now last but not the least is <laughs> mythical which is from ardal zafran which i told you i bought it literally because i love the bottle people had different opinions about it some people liked it some people did not in my opinion like i honestly bought this for the bottle and because it had this mango note and i've been looking for like a good mango fragrance so on fragrantica it's got 3.95 which is not bad uh, it's a very cheap perfume. I got it like a little bit more expensive because I got it like uh, I asked my sister to get it from US and it was quite pricey over there. I'm gonna try and put the official notes on the side over here because I remember I had the official notes for it. It definitely has mango and patchouli which are not listed over here. Like this perfume again I can just tell you that it is a very strong perfume. It's very cloying and mine still has like a little bit of that gasoline vibe going on in this. And I know it needs to still macerate because like the potential of this perfume is like excellent. By the way, if you're expecting this mango to smell like a fresh mango or like a juicy mango, it's not going to smell like that. It's a very dry mango. This entire perfume is like it has this dry feel like the perfume dried off and then you're smelling it, you know. People are comparing this to Gris Dior and like no. To me, the close, closest scent it smells to is the Aqua Woman by um, Roaches. And... That's one perfume I want to buy, but it is like so freaking expensive. This one is like the same. It's like, imagine all the notes I told you or imagine the notes like which are there. And then it has this like super aquatic thing also going on at the same time. It has this mothy thing, mothy, <laughs> moth, <laughs> a mossy thing going on, which is also like, like giving it that intrigue. And like, I don't know, it's definitely leaning a little masculine. Like for women, it might be a little challenging. But if you're up for smelling like very different, this is like a perfume that will make you smell like really different. But the opinion of liking this perfume or not liking this perfume will definitely be polarizing. I don't see this being a blind buy <laughs> or generally like being loved by people. It will definitely be polarizing. Either it's going to be like an absolute love or it'll be like an absolute hate. So be wary of this perfume because it, again, it smells like quite Middle Eastern. It smells quite... Okay, I was going to use one word, but it smells like from uh, Far East and Middle East. It's like a combination of the two. All in all, it smells very high quality. It has that niche vibe going on. Like people will ask you whether they like the perfume or not. I'm not sure, but they will ask you what perfume you're wearing because you're going to smell, you're going to be the most unique smelling person in the place, wherever you're going to be. For me, this is like an 8 out of 10. I'm not going to give it more than that because it's still like, I should also be in a mood to actually spray this. And I would reserve this for evenings. The projection is like two feet. Longevity would be definitely six plus hours, uh, if not more. And uh, it's a yay for me. Like, it's pretty. Plus the bottle kind of like, oh, come on, look at that beauty. Oh. 
Mythical, by the way, is a it's a measurement for weighing gold, you know. So that's it for today. So this was my yen ne. So this was probably like one of the successful ones because I only gave ne to this perfume, which is the Hayati Florence, and that too, like kind of I can bear it right now. But I'll let you guys know when I'm decluttering. The declutter video was scheduled for uh, November, but then I was like, you know what? Let's keep it reserved for end of the year so that I can still smell these perfumes more and then like uh, gather the actual um, courage to declutter. <laughs> it's so difficult for me to let go of perfumes but when I sell these perfumes I'll be able to buy new perfumes. So I hope you enjoyed the video guys. I love you so much and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!